There are two kinds of pilots. Not Pontius pilot. <laughs> Airplane pilots. Okay? There's two kinds. Now, these two kinds, one, it, well, we, could, we could divide different categories, but what we're going to look at real quick is this. There is what is called instrument-rated pilots. And then there's non-instrument-rated pilots. Non-instrument-rated pilots are highly restricted. Instrument-rated pilots are less restricted. Why? Because they know how to operate according to the instruments of their plane. The non-instrument-rated pilots, can, they can't fly at night. They can't fly in bad weather. They, you know, they can't fly in darkness. They can't fly. Why? Because they, they don't go by their gauges, by their instruments. In other words, they have to go almost by line of sight and they have to look ahead and that kind of stuff. Now, here's the thing. If you don't go by your instruments, then when you're looking out, see, you've got to be able to see where you're at. You have to look at landmarks and that kind of stuff. If you can't see out there, the minute you come into clouds, if you can't go by your gauges and your instruments, it takes 90 seconds for, your, for you to become disoriented. 90 seconds. And all of a sudden, you'll think you're flying straight. And in reality, you're flying this way, which also means you're curving off, which also means you're no longer on the path that your flight plan was. Now you're going to end up somewhere else. But an instrument rate, now now get this, the the non-instrument rated pilots can only operate by sight. But the instrument rated, see the instrument rated pilots they have to know their gauges and they have to trust their gauges beyond what they can see out the window. So if they look at their gauges and the gauge says that they're slightly off, they know to alter it even though it may not feel off, but they will go by the gauge, even if it says something different than what they're feeling or seeing. Why? Because they're instrument rated. See, an instrument rated pilot looks at the gauges he doesn't look to the left or the right. That's right. He looks at the gauges. He, now, he could be tempted, and there's times that you can look out. There's times you can see things, and you want to see things, but at the same time, you don't go by what you see. Right. You go by the instruments, and the instruments tells you how high you are, whether you're okay, what's going on, how much fuel you have, all these things. It's all right there. Uh, instrument rated, non-instrument rated, Yes. Uh, non-instrument rated means fly by sight. Okay? In Christian terms, that would mean carnal. Because yes. you can only fly by sight. But now, notice, instrument rated, they don't fly by sight. They fly by faith in their instruments. Right. You got that? You fly by the instruments on your instrument panel. You don't look to the left or the right. You keep looking straight ahead at the instrument panel. You don't fly by sight. You fly by faith in your instruments. Now, non-instrument rated can only fly when the weather's clear. I've already said this to you, but no storms, no night, no darkness. They cannot fly by faith. They only fly by sight. So they are carnal, sense ruled. Now, instrument rated. You must know and trust your instruments. Now, the instrument rated pilot knows his eyes can and will deceive him. They have to know that, right? 90 seconds flying by sight, you can get disoriented. Now, what is that telling us? What is our instrument? This is it. Now, the Holy Spirit is your teacher. He, what is he going to teach you to do? How to fly instrument rated. He's going to teach you how to fly by the book. You got that? Now, the book knows. What's in the book is the way you have to fly. So you have to fly according to the book. So to be instrument rated, you have to look at what the book says. Now, here's the thing. You have to know what the book says. And if you have a misunderstanding of the book, it can kill you. Do you understand? If you think that gauge is supposed to be one thing and it's supposed to be something else, you could die. That's how serious. Now, is it the aircraft's manufacturer's fault if you die? No. Why? Because the aircraft manufacturer produced a manual that you're supposed to know before you fly. Does that make sense? Well, guess what? Our manufacturer created the manual. 
So just read the manual. Now I know us men, we never read the instructions. You know, wait, well, I can figure it out. How's that working out for you? Well, it'll get you killed. It can get your family killed. You can't figure it out. You just have to know what the instrument says. See, the instrument says, by his stripes, you were healed. So you can't say, well, I don't feel healed. No, see, now you're not instrument rated. Now you're not instrument rated. Why? Because you're not going by the instruments. But, but, but I, here's what I think. Here, here's how I think God thinks about this. Okay, I can tell you right now. Nobody cares what you think God says, especially the devil. The devil loves it when you think you know what God says whenever you quote it and it's not what God said. Yeah. See, the devil loves it because then he knows you don't know the instrument manual. Ma- uh, manual. See, you've got to be instrument rated. You've got to move from going by sight and going by feeling, even religious feeling, even the good, fuzzy, warm feelings that you can have at times with God. That can't be your guide. Your guide is, it is written. Go back and read Psalm 119. Everything in there is about the book, about the book, the book, the book, your word, your commandments, all these things, all the way through. We have to realize this is the answer of how to live your life. Not based on what you think about God, but based on what God has actually said about himself. Now, I will tell you, you will not find anything in here about salvation or healing or prosperity or anything else in there that is based on an if based on God. The if is based on you. If you will observe to do all these things then you will make your way prosperous. Then you will have good success. Nothing in there if about God. God, There is no if in God. He's already said, this is the way it is. Now we could, you know, we can invoke God's sovereignty in this, but we have to realize God's sovereignty wrote this book. So God put his name on this book. So this book is the way it is. This is the sovereignty of God. Do you understand that? God is not fickle. Amen. He's not saying, and you get it, and you get it. He, he's not Oprah. <laughs> right? <laughs> and you get it. And, no, not you. I don't like you. And you get it. And you, that's not God. God is not a respecter of persons. What he said, now he is a respecter of faith. Yes. And like Wigglesworth said, if you will have faith in God, God will jump over a thousand people just to get to you. Right. Yeah. See, if you, he says, if when you're in a place where you have nothing to lean on but God, he goes, oh, you're in a wonderful place. Amen. But the problem is too often we make him our last resort yeah. rather than our first resort. Right. Amen? Amen. 